Welcome to a Lean Stacks instructional video. This video is part of the Spring Boot series. In this video, we build upon the Greeting Web Services project, adding an asynchronous process. Asynchronous processes or tasks are executed by Spring in a new thread, allowing processing on the main thread to continue in parallel. Let's get started. I have opened the sample Spring Boot application in the Spring Tool Suite. Open the application class. This is the main configuration class for the application. Add the Enable Async annotation to the application class. This instructs Spring to search the code base for methods annotated with asynchronous task metadata. To illustrate asynchronous processing, we will create a new email service. This service will not actually have code to send email messages, however it's quite plausible that the activity of creating and sending an email, either through a local service provider or a cloud email service, is a candidate for asynchronous processing. In the services package, create a new interface named email service. Within that interface, declare three methods. The first is named send and sends an email synchronously. The second, named send async, will send an email asynchronously and not return any value back to the client. The third sends an email asynchronously but does return the status of that operation back to the client. The future interface provides methods which allow asynchronous processes to return a value or an exception. In JDK 8, an, impl an implementation of the future interface named completable future is an excellent candidate for our purposes. However, if you're using JDK 7 or lower, there's no implementation of the future interface for our simple needs. Let's create our own implementation of the future interface named async response. This class implements the methods defined by the future interface and a few more which are impl implemented in the completable future class in JDK 8. First, create a package named org.example.ws.util. Then within that package, create a new class named async response. Since there are more than just a few lines of code in our async response class, I'll paste in some code and walk through it. A future indicates the status of some object which will be returned at a later time by a running task. The future has Boolean variables to indicate if that task is done or has been canceled. There are variables to hold the returned value or an exception if one is thrown by the asynchronous task. Various methods facilitate setting the value of these variables. The complete and complete exceptionally methods are used by the asynchronous task to finalize the future object for the initiating thread. The thread that initiates the asynchronous task uses one of the getter methods to retrieve the value of the asynchronous response. When a get method is invoked, the initiating thread blocks and waits for the asynchronous task to complete. Remember that the JDK8 completable future class offers the same functionality and more than that which we are illustrating in our async response class. If you are using JDK8, we recommend using the completable future class. Now that we've created the async response class, let's use it in the implementation class for the email service. In the service package, create a new class named Email Service Bean, which implements the email service interface. I'm going to copy and paste the business logic for the three service methods into the class and walk through the code. The 
The send method synchronously creates an email message and transmits it through an email service. For the purposes of this sample application, we simply simulate that process by creating an artificial 5 second delay. This will help us to visualize the asynchronous behavior in the application logging statements. The send async method is annotated with async. When the Spring application context starts, the component scanner identifies this method as asynchronous and when invoked, uses a task manager to run the method in a new thread. This method does not return a response, therefore the initiating thread continues to run in parallel with the email service. This is sometimes referred to as fire and forget asynchronous processing because the initiating thread is not aware of the outcome of the asynchronous process. The send async with result method is similar to the send async method, but it returns a future wrapped response to the initiating thread. The response from the send method is stored in the async response using the complete method. Should the send method throw an exception, the async response is completed using the completed exceptionally method. When the initiating thread calls the get method on the future, either the Boolean response is returned or an execution exception is thrown. Finally, to illustrate the asynchronous processes, let's create a web service endpoint that re retrieves a greeting from the database and sends it in an email asynchronously. Open the greeting controller class and add a new method named sendGreeting. I'll paste in the contents of the sendGreeting method. Don't forget to wire in your email service. This web service endpoint listens for HTTP POST requests. The URL contains a path variable referencing a greeting primary key identifier followed by the command send. The URL optionally contains a query string parameter named wait. We ensure that the parameter value is defaulted to false in case it's not supplied in the request URL. The web service ret retrieves the greeting entity using the supplied primary key identifier. Then the greeting is asynchronously sent using the email service. If the wait parameter value is true, the web service waits for the result of the email service before returning the greeting to the web service client. If the wait parameter value is false, the web service immediately returns the greeting to the web service client without waiting for the result of the email service task. Let's run the application and see our hard work in action. Open a terminal window and change directory to the project base directory. Type mvn spring boot run to start the embedded Apache Tomcat server. I'm going to open a RESTful web service client and call the new greeting API. First, let's invoke the service setting the wait parameter to true. If we look at the console logging, Notice the web service controller receives the, retrieves the greeting using the greeting service and then uses the email service to send a message. Since we're waiting for the response from the email service, the full 5 second artificial delay must elapse before the response is returned to the web service controller. Finally, the web service controller returns the greeting in JSON format to the client. Note in the RESTful web service client, the elapsed time is slightly greater than the 5 second artificial delay. During that delay, we could have performed other tasks in the initiating thread and finally invoked the get method on the future to await the response from the asynchronous task, therefore maximizing the processing that occurred in parallel. Now let's run the web service setting the wait parameter to false. Notice how quickly we received the web service response. Let's look at the console log. 
the greeting was retrieved from the database and the email service invoked. However, the web service immediately returned the response to the client. The asynchronous email task continued running in its own thread. There are many practical uses for asynchronous processing in applications. Use them to offload long-running tasks to dedicated threads and maximize parallel processing. Remember, special care needs to be taken with exception handling in asynchronous tasks to ensure that when problems occur, they may be identified and addressed. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Subscribe to the Lean Stacks YouTube channel to receive updates as new videos are published. As always, you can find more information on leanstacks.com.